sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to love, to heal and forgive. He lived and died.
and it's because he lives we can face tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Again, we say Merry Christmas to you. Uh, and we have come now to the preaching moment. And there is a word on this Christmas morning. Uh, it's found in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 2. I'm just going to lift one verse, verse 11, Matthew chapter 2, Matthew chapter 2 and verse 11 reads thusly, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God, you may be seated. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. I want to speak this morning from the theme or the topic, what can you give God for Christmas? What can you give God for Christmas? We've been speaking for the last few weeks about rediscovering Christmas. And we have been dealing with those Advent themes of hope, peace, joy, and love. Yes. But today I want us to focus on one uh, uh, Advent theme that is often overlooked and rarely discussed. And that is the theme of giving. Yeah. Giving, giving. In this season, in fact, many of us have spent countless hours shopping for gifts for our beloved family members and friends. We have all unlikely had that unpleasant experience of trying to figure out what to buy the person mm -hmm. who seems to have everything. everything. Wow. Hmm? Likewise, on this day that we commemorate the birth of Christ, the question comes to us, what can we give God who has everything? As the songwriter said, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. What, what can we give God who has everything? Well, some 2,018 years ago, some magi or wise men gave us a lesson in what we can give Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The Lord who has everything. everything. And the first thing that we can give him is we can give him our time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We can give him our time. It says, and when they came into the house, it means that they were present with where Jesus was Amen. when they came into the house. Now, it's important that we understand a couple of things about this small phrase. First, when we see that they came into the house, this moment does not happen at the manger on the night that Jesus was born. Now, 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 I know that it messes up our decorations and our manger scene because we got the wise men there with the shepherds. We got everything, everything there in the, in the manger, but that this did not take place on that night. Huh? Uh, it took, it, it, uh, scholars believe that it was several months up to maybe even two years had passed since that night. Huh? 
In other words, by now, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus were settled into a house in Bethlehem. Though Joseph's hometown is Nazareth in the northern part of Israel, known as Galilee, these wise men had traveled tirelessly over great distance just to get to a place where they could come into the house. Yeah. Huh? They were divinely guided and followed a star that rose in the east, which yeah. would lead them to Jesus. And let me tell you, it wasn't an overnight journey. That's right. It took some time yes, for them to get there. But they were determined that they were going to get to where Jesus was, even if it meant that it took some time for them to get there. Yeah. When they came into the house. Oh, Lord, have mercy. In other words, on this Christmas morning, you should take a little time, Lord Jesus, to come into the house. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, them toys going to be there when you get home. That turkey, if you put it in a couple hours later, it's still going to get done today. But you need to take a little time to come into the house. It's something about being in the house of the Lord when you're talking about the day that he was born. And, and, and these wise men said, we're going to get to the house. We don't care how long it take. If you read the account, they had to travel through some places. Herod, Herod harassed them, wanted to know where they were going, what they were going there for. They got, but they kept on going to get to where Jesus I want to give you this this morning. I don't care how long it takes, how much time you got to give. You need to get to the place where Jesus is. You got to give him, give him your time. Too often, beloved, getting to where Jesus is is the last thing on our list. I would go to church today, but... You know, uh, 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 I got to get this turkey in. I, I would go to church today, but I don't want to interrupt the kids opening their presents. I don't, I don't want to spoil it. How can you spoil somebody's Christmas? Come on, Bringing them to the house where they can under, understand and uncover what the Christmas season is. If it hadn't been for Jesus, it wouldn't be no gifts under the tree. You got to give him your time. You got to give him your time. But, but not only do you got to give him your time, you got to give him your worship. Right. It, it, what does it say? I'm still in verse 11. It says, when they were coming to the house, it took time to get there. When they were coming to the house, they saw young young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. They fell down and worshipped him him. Lord, have mercy. You got to give him your worship. Huh? Now, 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 let me just clarify one thing. Uh, you notice that it says they worship him. Him. They didn't come to worship Mary. That's right. That's right. Uh, they, 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 Joseph didn't even mention. Uh -huh. they, they, they came and when they worship, they worship him. 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 It, it, after this journey, y'all, uh, 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 using uh, my sanctified imagination, I can imagine that these wise men were probably hungry. Yeah. They had traveled a long way. Yeah. I imagine that they would have preferred to have a drink. Uh -huh. They had been traveling a long way in the arid region to come to this place yeah. where they could see this child, but notice when they enter the house, their concern is not about themselves. Yeah. Their concern is not about their needs. Their concern is not about their condition. But when they come into the house and they come into the place where Jesus is, the only thing that they can do is fall on their knees and worship him. I believe there's a lesson in here for us because too often we might make it to the house. But when we make it to the house, we're so worried about about our stuff that we neglect to worship him. Lord, have 
mercy. Y'all don't want to hear me on this Christmas morning. We come into the house and we so worried about our bills that need to be paid. We so worried about the stresses that are stressing us. We so worried about who getting on our last ever loving nerve that we come to the house and we leave the house not having worshipped the person that we should be coming to the house to see. Lord have mercy but if you're going to give him something this Christmas give him your time get to the house but don't just get to the house give him your worship what I like about these wise men is that uh, scholars tell us that they were probably men of nobility they were probably kings of some place some smaller provinces or countries but not that they didn't allow their positions to get them out of position Y'all to get that. They, they, they didn't allow their position to get them out of position because even though they were somebody's wherever they were from, when they were in the house with Jesus, the only position they could get into was on their knee. Lord, have mercy. I, I promise you, I promise you this Christmas, if you would come to the house with worship, uh, 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 bow down before him, give him some worship. I promise you, that stuff that you're carrying around with you, it will seem a lot lighter once you start worshiping. I promise you, you'll feel a lot better when you worship him. I promise you, that depression will lift when you start worshiping him. These wise men didn't allow their position to get them out of position, they gave him their worship. They came into the house. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Lord, have mercy. I, I, look, I, I, believe, I believe a lot of times we miss it, y'all, because we don't realize who it is we're coming to the house to see. We have come, become so familiar with Jesus. We've become so familiar with church that this is just another place that we come to once a week or twice a week. It's just become routine. But, 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 but if we really understood who it is that we were coming when we came to the house to see, uh, the only appropriate response you could give him is worship. I, I believe that these wise men, y'all, 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 I can see y'all need some more encouragement. I, I believe these wise men, y'all, had studied and had understood what Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 said. I think that they realized and they studied in, from de, under Daniel and realized that it, it would be 409 years from that day that the, that the Messiah would be coming into the world and they began looking for him. Lord have mercy, which is why when the angels came and told them you'll see his star in the east. They said, oh, that's it. That's the one. And they started on their journey. But they didn't start on their journey just to go from point A to point B. They had in their mind where we get to this one who is going to be born unto us. When we get to this place where Emmanuel is, God with us, we're going to worship him. Now, 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 I want you to get this. I want you to get this. The, these were Gentile leaders. Yeah. Hmm? Uh-huh. These were Gentile leaders. But watch this. They knew how to worship. Yes, they did. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Y'all, somebody just missed your shout. Yeah. Because I'm a, let me get you there. It, 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 sometimes it's the ones who not supposed to know who it is that they're going to. It's the ones who not supposed to understand. It's the ones who not supposed to know how to worship. It's the ones who not supposed to understand who Jesus is. It's the ones who are not supposed to be in the house. But when you get in the house, you give him your worship. Lord, have mercy. Give him your time. Give him your worship. And and, and then lastly, this morning, I I want you to know that uh, uh, what you can give to God, you can give him your heart. Mm. It says in verse 11, they worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Hmm? 
and when they opened their treasure. Some might say, wait a minute, preacher, you said give him your heart. Did that say that they opened their treasure? Well, I'm, I'm going to let you in on a little secret about giving. You will never open your treasure if you have not first opened your heart. The reason why some have trouble giving of the treasure is because our hearts are closed. But when God can get your heart, God can get what's in your wallet. I know I'm telling the truth. These wise men were able to open their treasure because they opened their heart. They presented unto him gifts. Now, I want you to understand what this meant for them. It meant that they had to make preparation because they were traveling from afar to come to where Jesus was. So in planning to come from afar, they had to have enough resources to not only get them from where they were to where they were going, but they had to plan to have sufficient to give him a gift. Lord, have mercy. In other words, y'all, they had to say, this is how much it's going to cost for us to get from where we are to where we need to go. So when we're going to see him, yeah. we've got to factor in that cost before we go yeah. so that we don't have to dip into what we're going to get. Y'all don't want to get it. See, too often, y'all, we don't plan our giving for him. That's why it is that we dig into our gift. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I can't tithe this week. I need gas money. I can't tithe this week. Uh, 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 we got to go to the movies. I can't, I can't tithe this week. I, the, the Lord understands why I can't give him, give to him this week because the Lord wants me to live a good life. I, I, I got to pay this bill, and the Lord know I got to pay this bill. And what I say to that is, you're right. The Lord wants you to pay your bills. But watch this. The Lord, the Bible says he will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. In other words, if at the end of your check you don't have anything to give to him something is going wrong I'm living proof that God can do more with your 90% yes. than you can do with 100 Amen. and these wise men were crazy enough to believe we're going to travel a far way off to follow a star that's going to lead us to an infant and knowing that they were going to see an infant they took gold frankincense and myrrh. Now if I had time I would discuss with you why each of these elements are valuable in their own right and how some scholars believe that each of them have some type of forecasting into the personhood of Christ but let me just say this, these were three very expensive items. Yeah. Hmm? Uh -huh. And so watch this, they could have said well we're going to use this stuff to get us to where we got to go. Uh -huh. Then we got to stay in the hotel when we get there. Uh -huh. Then we got to make it back. Yeah. Then we, so, so we ain't going to be able to give him nothing. We just going to go and worship, get happy, and go home. Uh -huh. Lord have mercy. Huh? A ain't that how some of us do church? Yeah. I'm going to get to the house. And I'm going to worship. Uh -huh. I'm going to leave sweaty. Uh -huh. I'm going to leave happy. Uh -huh. But, but, but I'm going to leave with my treasure. Y'all yeah. yeah. quiet. Yeah. <laughs> but when the Lord gets your heart, yeah. oh, you'll open up your treasure box. And you'll say, Lord, whatever I got, I got because you gave it to me first. And all that I have, I have because of you. And I'm going to give it. Yeah. To you. That's why when we used to do the offering, we would end with all things come of thee, O oh Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. I don't own it anyway. You, you gave it to me. And these wise men opened up their treasure and they gave God all that they had. Lord, they did 
couldn't hold back from Jesus. Huh? Now watch this. I want you to get this. The people of the East never approached the present the presence of kings and people of great renown without a present in their hand. E even, even, even to this day, that custom is noticed in the Old Testament and it still prevails in the East to this day. In, in fact, uh, Lil Wayne tells the story about how when he traveled to Dubai uh, and, and they wouldn't let him uh, 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 come through the airport with all of his jewelry. And, 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 and the prince of Dubai was so embarrassed that he told him, walk through, bring all your stuff with you, come on through. And he presented him with a $20,000 watch. Yeah. And, and, and not only did he present him with a $20,000 watch, but because of the inconvenience, he said to him, which do you prefer, a Ferrari or a Lamborghini? <laughs> And he had a Lamborghini delivered to his home. Yeah. Huh? Uh, that, that, that's how they do over in the East. Uh, but, but watch this. In other words, they understand that when you're coming in the presence of somebody who is somebody, you don't come empty-handed. See, it's only in the church that we come in the presence of somebody who is the somebody, and we come empty-handed. We come with a laundry list of problems. We come with a laundry list of things that ain't going right. We come with a laundry list of gripes and complaints. But if we would ever enter into his courts with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise, if we would ever be thankful unto him and bless his name, if we would ever open up our treasure boxes, Lord, have mercy. I told you last week, that's the only thing, that's the only commandment that God gives us where he says, you can put me to the test. On a Christmas morning, he says, I want you to open up your treasure box. See if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There is no room to receive it. I already did it once over 2,000 years ago. I took the world's greatest gift, wrapped him in a thin veneer of flesh, placed a bow on him, sent him through 40 and two generations, had him born in a manger to a virgin. And you talk about a Christmas tree. Yeah. I hung him on an Easter tree. Lord, have mercy. I hung the greatest gift of the world under a tree for all the world to see. And you killed the gift that I gave you. But I want you to know that had to be because he stayed dead for three days. But early on the third day, he rose again with all power in his hand. And I want you to know that Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving because over 2,000 years after his death, burial, and resurrection, he's still giving life. You ask me how I know he gave me eternal life. Is there anybody in here on Christmas morning that can testify for yourself? He's given you eternal life. Has he given you eternal life? Has he given you a gift? Has he been good to you? Has he blessed you? Has he healed your body? Has he comforted you in sickness? Has he kept your company in loneliness? Has he blessed you? Has he kept you? He's given unto you gifts that you don't have room to maintain them. So on his birthday, won't you give him some worship? And won't you give him some praise? children used to sing happy birthday Jesus I'm so glad it's Christmas don't you know him aren't you glad you know him give him some praise stand to your feet to your feet. There might be someone here today. You've been breathing the air that God gave you. Hallelujah. 
You've been wearing clothes that God gave you. You've been driving cars that God gave you. But you haven't given him your heart. This is the greatest opportunity of the service because it's an opportunity for you to give something to the God who already owns everything. You can give him your heart. You can give him you because that's the most important thing that you can give him. Because see, when he has your heart, you'll give him your time. That's right. Yes. When he has your heart, you'll give him your worship. Yes. When he has your heart, you'll even give him your treasure. Yes, Lord. But he's got to have your heart. Right. Yes, Lord. What do you mean, Pastor, he has to have my heart? It means that you have to surrender yourself to him. Oh, yes. You have to say, I know that I have sinned. I've done wrong in my life. I've messed up. And I know that I can't fix myself up. I know that the only person that can fix me is God yes. through the person of his son, Jesus Christ. I know that Jesus died for my sins to pay the penalty for my sin, that he was buried and rose again on the third day and that he's coming again. And I want to receive him to myself so that I know that I belong to him and that he belongs to me. What a Christmas testimony. To be able to say on Christmas morning, 2022, I received the greatest gift ever known to man. I received Christ as my Savior. Is there one, man, woman, boy, or girl, you want to know that you belong to Jesus? You want to know that he belongs to you? You want to know that heaven is your home? Won't you come? Won't you come? If you're in the virtual sanctuary, just type in, I want to be saved, and we will reach out to you today. There might be one here that says, Brother Pastor, I'm saved. I know Jesus to the pardoning of my sin, but I'm looking for a church home, a place where I can serve, a place where I can worship, a place where I can uh, uh, give my time. The doors of this assembly, this fellowship that we know are called the New Pilgrim Baptist Church are open at this time. Won't you come? Again, if you're in the virtual sanctuary and you want to join, just type in, I want to join. Is there one? Is there one for salvation or for membership? As the deacons walk the aisle, you don't have to walk alone. Give God a hand clap of praise. For by your admission, we are in the house of believers that are joined to a local assembly. And if the Lord were to call for his church right now, this place would be empty. Once again, we say to you, Merry Christmas to you and your families. If you did not get your gift from Lady Maria, please see her before you leave. We have cards and gifts for everyone today. Uh, and we will make sure that you get those on your way out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Enjoy the day with your family, with your loved ones, and we look forward to seeing you for those who will be here on Wednesday for the congregational meeting, and for everyone else, we look forward to seeing you next week as we bring in 2023. This is the last Sunday of 2022. Amen. 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 So we look forward to 2023 and all that the Lord has in store for us. Let's close in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you afresh for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, even what our hearts have felt. Now, Lord God, we pray that your word will find a lodging place in our hearts where it can take root and grow and produce much fruit, some 30, some 60, some even a hundredfold. Bless us now as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. And Lord, that you would keep us in this Christmas day as we keep our minds stayed on you. It is in the strong name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the throne of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, even, forevermore. And all of God's people say,
and may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.